St. Peter's Basilica. This is Bluebrick Special Set 10.5.2.18. It was released in January 2023 for about 80 euros. The set contains 2728 pieces. As typical for Bluebrick Special Sets, this set doesn't come in a fancy colorful box. Also, there are no printed building instructions. You have to download them as a PDF file from the Blue Bricks website. The bricks aren't pre-sorted, they don't come in numbered bags. So, I would recommend to open every bag before you start the building process and just sort all the bricks by type. Of course, this will take quite a while when you sort over 2700 pieces, but I think it's time well spent, because you will have the benefit that you don't have to search for every single brick at every single building step during uh, the construction period. Well, my box did come quite damaged. It didn't break open or something, but it looks like it had a heavy time. I don't know if Bluebricks already sent me a damaged uh, box or this is fault of the uh, the delivery company. I don't know if the postal service fucked this up or whatever, but uh, well, it isn't uh, any fancy or important box, so I don't mind. I already uh, had a look inside, that's uh, so uh, you can see that the tape is cut open and I couldn't see any damaged bricks or something uh, or something like that, so I think everything is just fine. Well, then right now I will start sorting my bricks before I can start with the build. Okay, I have just sorted all of my bricks and now it's time to have a look at the bricks themselves, what kind of quality they are. As you can see, the bricks do have quite ugly injection holes. There are really quite huge craters on them. So optically they aren't as nice as Lego bricks or well, I don't know, Kobe bricks or whatever there is on the market. But at least they seem to work with any problem. They interlock perfectly and I don't think we will have problems with the clutch power. When interlocking uh, bigger bricks or uh, bigger plates we can see that it's sometimes a bit more difficult than we are used from Lego or Go bricks. You have to push quite hard to interlock them, but that's not a bad thing per se. They hold together quite well and I think I won't be able to disassemble them without you uh, using both hands. So let me just place the camera over here for a second. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the clutch power for this uh, bigger bricks is quite high, but that's good. So the whole thing won't fall apart. Low clutch power can be a problem, but I think when the clutch power is a bit too high, that's, that's no problem at all. Step 2. Well, that was quick. We already reached a step in which a quite uncommon building technique is used. Well, it's not uncommon for blue bricks. Blue bricks use this technique a lot, but it's uncommon for Lego. 
what we do is that we place 16 of these uh, only studs or hollow studs with the help of this tool on the underside of these plates over here. You can see in this example how it's done. We stick the tool inside the stud, then we place the whole thing on the underside of this uh, it's, it's a tile in this example. Then we remove the tool and voila, the only stud is placed on the underside of that tile. Why is it done? Well, we need this to invert the building directions. When we have put these uh, studs on the underside of a tile or a plate, we can simply put a prick on it in another way than you would normally do. You don't have to interlock the studs of the brick with the underside of uh, the plate. You can interlock both undersides, the underside of the plate with the underside of the brick now. And that's quite cool. Well, I will show you how it is done with uh, in reality for this step, not just the example on the building instructions. Let me place the camera here because I need both hands to do it. Uh, does it hold? Yeah. So you can see we got our, our uh, hollow studs over here. Then we use our tool, stick it inside that stud, then we go over to our uh, plate and place the tool here. And now I uh, use my fingernail to push down the hollow stud slightly and remove the tool. And as you can see, the Although that is now placed on the underside of this plate. And now we would be able to, for example, use another plate and place it here. And you can see that both undersides of these two plates are connected with each other. So we can invert the building direction without having to use a lot of space. That's very cool. 27. In this step, we have two segments. I show you how I have built them, the left segment and the right segment. And now we have to place the right segment on the left segment by interlocking it into uh, this tile over here. But at the same time, we have to put this bit below this tile, as you can see here. So it's not so easy to press downwards, but at the same time sidewards. So it should look like this later on. It would have been way easier if we had this part and then we would have put uh, the tile underneath it and then interlock this part to the whole thing. The same technique already was used before. Let's have a look. I think it's somewhere over here. Yes, step 22. And there you can see that we just got these two parts. So this one without a tile and this one. And we just put them next to each other. And in the next step we put the tile underneath. This would have been way easier to do than this. It's, it's just not possible. But when I remove the tile first. Now I do this. You can see that these two angles over here line up and now I can place the tile underneath. This 
yeah, when you do it right, this would be way easier to do. But, well, it's something you need to do with two hands. It's, yeah, it's possible with one hand, but it would be way easier with two hands. And I don't know why they chose another method, a method now in this step when they did it way better before. That's a bit curious. Step 109. In this step we have to build this little segment over here. The problem is that we can't see where we have to place these uh, hollow studs. It's not visible from this angle. When we go to the next step, 110, we can see that we now have to place this segment on the underside of the segment. And, well, I guess it's done through the hollow studs. I have placed them here. I know that they have to be placed at exactly this position because we have done the same thing several steps before. When you see, uh, have a look over here, you can see that we get here this part and this part is over here. And I remember that both uh, of the hollow studs were interlocked with uh, this slope over here. So it should be like uh, it's a bit difficult to do with one hand. It should be like this. And yeah, that's correct. Step 138. I pushed too hard. The whole construction fell apart. Oh, let's see if I can fix this. Step 169. It's very cool that the building instructions tell us to pay attention over here. We have to place two of those uh, one by two brick modifieds. And as you can see, we have to place the first one with the studs on, uh, with the, studs on the side showing upwards. And the second one is placed with uh, the normal studs showing upwards, like this. I think without this sign to pay attention, I wouldn't have noticed it and would have placed the whole thing wrong. Step 189. In this step, I have to build this segment two times. I have built it once now, and now I have to build it a second time. And for doing that, I need to place this one by one brick uh, below this one by eight brick. And the problem is that it won't stay there. I can't interlock those two bricks. It's definitely a problem with this brick because when I use another one by one brick, I don't have this problem. It's definitely this one. And as you can see, it ejects itself out of the interlocking. Hmm. Well, at least I will be able to place some plates below it, and so I hope the plates will hold this whole thing in place. We will see. Yeah, it's not perfect, but at least everything stays together now. Step 201. 
we got these four segments here and now we have to place them into those uh, gaps on the whole square and the thing how they are placed is quite strange you only drop them in those gaps well I don't think we will turn the whole set on its head when it's completed but I always prefer if something is interlocked so it holds together without uh, the help of gravity <laughs> that's that's an interesting building technique, but also quite strange. Well, by the way, we have now completed uh, the whole of the square. We uh, of St. Peter's Square. We are starting with the buildings in the next step. So let's have a look at this cool building technique we used to build it. As you can see, the whole construction is made with the help of the snot technique, which stands for studs not on top. And well, you can see that the whole thing is quite stable. Of course, when I built the thing, it cr it crashed at one point and I had to rebuild it, but uh, that was just me being too clumsy. Oh man, of course this had to happen when I'm speaking about my clumsiness. <laughs> well, uh, there wasn't much damage. The only thing which fell apart was this one and yeah, I can fix this quite easily as you can see. It looked worse than it was because uh, I uh, dropped the whole thing on one of my uh, little plates where I, uh, which I used to uh, um, saw off my bricks. Well, back to our construction here. The whole thing is very structurally sound and uh, well, it looks thicker than it is. You can see that uh, we used the snug technique all over it, but it is not too studs thick as shown here. Well, actually, actually, let me just turn it on around. It is only one st uh, stud thick and uh, only at the borders it is two studs thick. And what I think what is really cool is that the structure is supported by these uh, Technic bricks and that's really cool. Mm -hmm. That makes everything really stable. That's, that's a cool idea. Step 216. I just have completed the colonnade. As you can see it looks like there are several buildings. There are gaps between the buildings. In reality, this should be only one roof and this should be only one roof. But I see that it isn't possible to build this oval structure that precisely with uh, building blocks. So this solution is quite fine. But what I don't like so much is that you can see over here that uh, the roofs don't look the same. So we got these one by one slopes 
and they are quite glossy compared to the other roofs. Those are matte and also the colors don't look exactly the same. The same on the other side. I would have preferred if the one by one slopes would have been uh, matte too. Step 235. In the step we have attached these uh, tiles upon the rest of this con uh, construction. And as you can see, here is a gap. And it is because of the bad quality of the bricks. It's the same problem I had back when building uh, the St. Mark Square. As you can see, we put a lot of one by one plates atop of each other, or one by two plates. It doesn't matter, the problem is that all those plates added up don't uh, have the same height as when you uh, interlock several of those larger bricks into each other. And so the length of this part is a bit uh, longer than the length, uh, length of this part. This isn't a problem because it's only, well, a tiny bit of a millimeter. But we can see it when we put uh, plates on the whole thing, uh, tiles on the whole thing. Because the tiles uh, added to each other don't have the same combined length as all the plates uh, put in the snot technique on each other. And that's how these gaps appear here. Well, so far this doesn't uh, trouble me too much because we don't have run into constructional problems so far. But it's a bit scary when I think back at the St. Uh, Mark Square where these bad bricks really ended in problems with the whole construction. I hope that uh, St. Peter's Basilica uses another technique than these uh, little side wings or whatever these buildings are called. Step 319. I just have completed the facade of St. Peter's Basilica and I really like how all these columns are done. This is a great construction technique. It's done by stapling those uh, pieces here. So you just put several of them on top of each other like this and then you have your column. That's really cool. I've never used this technique before. Step 386 in this step we have to place this one by six plate and it isn't interlocked with anything else. It just sits here and it's totally free. There's no connection at all. And the thing is that this goes on like forever. It's still free. No connection here, no connection, no connection. Yeah, I don't think there is a connection. No, not at all. This really goes on forever. Well, I'm curious to find out where it will reconnect. Or where it will connect at all. Hmm, we will see. Step 399. 
Finally, here is the connection for our loose blade. It gets connected with this 1x4 brick. So I have already placed the brick over here and now I finally can interlock the loose plate. It's not so easy with one hand, but I will manage it. Yeah. Ta-da! Step 545. The build is complete. Well, let me change location real, uh, real quick and then we will have a look at this amazing building. This model is huge. I didn't expect it to be that big when I started the build. Well, let's have a look at what we can recognize. First of all, uh, the basilica itself. It is not the most important basilica by ecclesiastical lore, but uh, I think it's definitely the most famous one. I have been there several times and this building will never stop to amaze me. Entering the building is simply uh, jaw-dropping. The massive scale of everything instantly makes you understand how the building costs could be uh, so high that it resulted in the reformation. <laughs> it is the second basilica built on uh, the supposed grave of uh, Saint Peter. The first ancient Rome one was built by Emperor Constantine the Great. After 1200 years and many wars, the building was quite run down and so Pope Julius II ordered to build a new, even more impressive one. Architects of the time, or better said, uh, for this basilica the top architects of the time were used. The top-notch geniuses like uh, Bramante, Raphael, Michelangelo, Bernini and Borromini. Besides marble from other ancient Rome monuments, also a lot of stuff from the old St. Peter's Basilica was reused like various columns, uh, the marble disc on which Charlemagne was crowned emperor and so on. But uh, let's not talk about the treasures from the interior, that would be <laughs> way too much for this video. First of all, uh, we got Michelangelo's uh, monumental dome. I was afraid that uh, the construction is fragile, but no, uh, it is very stable. There are placed a lot of uh, plates on each other and so everything holds together perfectly well. It's... yeah, it's... <laughs> that's a quite good building technique. This is how things should be done. I also like the amount of uh, detail that we can see, for example, those ribs here and yeah, the tip up here, <laughs> that's, that's neat. Let me just turn it around a bit so that we can see it from the front again. The, um, the columns of the facade really uh, fascinate me. That was another amazing building technique used here. It just looks so cool. That was a great idea. We can even see the uh, Benedictation loggia over here. You know, uh, the place where a new pope is proclaimed and from where the Urbi et Orbi blessing is given by the pope. Bernini's uh, colonnade lacks a bit of detail. I think in reality there are way more columns than uh, shown here. It also looks like... Uh, there are many uh, different buildings, but uh, 
in reality there should only be one building on each side so here this should be one building and this should be one building but uh, we have talked about this before when uh, during the construction process i think it's not possible to do it much better with building blocks and this tiny scale so i absolutely can live with that Sadly, we can't see uh, the statues on top of the roofs. I think it would have looked amazing with countless white Lego minifigure trophies. Of course, a competitor of Lego is not allowed to use them, so yeah, blue bricks didn't come up with the idea or just left them out on purpose. Also, maybe the scale would have been a bit off, but wait, I got some of those trophies over here and then we can see. I don't have white ones, only these green ones. Sand green, I think, is the color. But, yeah, it, I think it's a bit too big. The statues aren't that big in reality, but it still looks quite cool. Let's place one over here. Yeah, that's, oops, where is it? <laughs> that's too huge, but nonetheless, I think it would have been a cool idea to place them there some, somehow. One thing I always uh, find funny is that uh, the left of these two uh, fountains over here was built by Carlo Fontana and Fontana is obviously uh, Italian for fountain <laughs> that's yeah that's I don't know I think why I think it's funny I I just like the idea <laughs> well the obelisk carving the obelisk out of a rock in a quarry near Aswan was started during the period of the new kingdom but uh, the undertaking never was finished in pharaoh uh, pharaonic times. During the times of Augustus, the obelisk was completed and erected in uh, Alexandria. In Emperor Caligula's times, then they transported the obelisk to Rome and placed it in uh, the circus of Caligula. Or later it was called Seiko, uh, the Circus of Nero, I think. Big parts of that uh, circus uh, used to be where the Basilica is nowadays. So I think maybe it went from here over that corner here like this. Actually, uh, parts of the basilica and the square sit on top of uh, the ruins of that circus. According to tradition, the circus is also the place of St. Peter's martyrdom. Well, back to the obelisk. <laughs> that uh, stone needle uh, stood about one and a half millennia at the same place. I don't know, maybe here. And yeah, the old basilica came and went down again, and also the new basilica was already completed in big parts. But then, under Pope uh, Sixtus V, the uncle of Carlo Fontane, Domenico Fontane, reloco uh, relocated the obelisk from its old position. Uh, to St. Peter's Square, where it still uh, stands today. By the way, uh, Domenico Fontana also uh, built the Palazzo Reale in Naples and he discovered Pompeii without ever getting to know the importance of what he has found. So it's interesting, but also a bit sad. I have no idea what these uh, gray slopes over here are. <laughs> Maybe solar panels, but I'm not sure about that. 
I wish they would have used another color for the roofs. Um, I don't like this, what is it, salmon so much that now another color might have looked better, I think. Salmon and gray combined just looks a bit curious, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, it's fine that the set uh, doesn't include uh, the Apostolic Palace over here, I think. Uh, but what I really miss is uh, the sacristy and the treasury what sits over here. They should have, uh, should have included it. It's I mean, it's it's an important part of the whole concept of Basilica. The base on which the square and the basilica sit, that's really great. The snot technique combined with technic bricks resulted in this very stable construction. I think this was really a good idea. Designer Anton has done a great job. Uh, after the Forum Romanum and uh, the St. Mark's Square, this is the uh, the, uh, the third set uh, designed by him that I have built. And I think building this one was the most easiest and relaxing one so far. Maybe nothing for absolute beginners, but there aren't overly complicated and fragile building techniques used. It is way easier to build this set than it is to build... Uh, the St. Mark's Square, as you have seen in one of my uh, previous videos. I have no idea why Blue Bricks themselves think uh, the level of uh, difficulty for this set is very challenging, while St. Uh, Mark's Square is only challenging. I think it is the other way around. I would have changed the order of some of the steps in the building instructions to smoothen the building process a bit, but there's nothing one can't handle. The bricks aren't the most beautiful ones. By the way, I see some of them are also dirty. This is some kind of oily stuff when you, you can rub it off if you want to, but that's annoying that they also ship dirty bricks. Well, uh, yeah, the, the bricks aren't so beautiful, but uh, they work perfectly well. They don't hinder you to ex uh, to to execute any building technique needed for the set. For eight euros, you really get. Uh, Neat and not so tiny model of St. Peter's Basilica.